You're still watching news on uh, here on Plus TV Africa. Now, Nigerian traders in Ghana have said they are ready to return home if Ghana refuses to honor the multilateral trade ag agreements of the economic community of West African states. Nigerian trader whose store was forcefully locked up by the Ghanaian security officials had recorded a video of the incident. In the video, the trader is asked to pay a million dollar registration fee. Though the victim shows the officials his business registration certificates and other documents, the enforcement team insists on shutting down his store. The closure of, of stores of other Nigerian businesses by Ghanaian security agents in Abose or Kai Circle, Accra and Kumasi, Ashanti region, over non-payment of the imposed $1 million fee, as well as allegations of harassment by local traders, sparked protests among Nigerian traders and resulted in diplomatic talks between the two countries. Joining us live now from Ghana is Kwame Jantua, CEO of African Energy Consortium Limited. And also uh, joining us is Funke Medon, who is the director of Lipward Limited. Good to have you both. Good afternoon to both of you. Afternoon. Good afternoon. All right. Uh, I'd like to begin with you, Kwame. Uh, some are making reference to the ECOWAS Revised Treaty, which states under Article 3, uh, 2G, and 3.2i also, that the community shall ensure the adoption of measures for the integration of the private sectors, particularly the creation of an enabling environment to promote small and medium scale enterprises and the harmonization of national investment codes leading to the adoption of a single community investment code. Whereas the argument has been made that ECOWAS treaty does not supersede the laws of the land. Which is it, if I may ask you? Well, good afternoon to your viewers. Good afternoon to you. Um, you see, with regards to this, we cannot have our kick and eat it at the same time, especially where West Africa is concerned, and especially with the ECOWAS protocols. Nigeria just closed their borders. And when they closed their borders, there was an ECOWAS protocol, but they went ahead and closed it. And it cost Ghanaian uh, importers from Nigeria quite a lot of money. It cost government quite a lot of money. It took our president to come and see your president, and still the borders were closed. And then COVID now came in. And if you look at the quantum of goods that have gone to waste, because of the closure of the Nigerian borders, cost Ghanaians a lot of money. But not to say, it's not as if um, we are trying to uh, uh, play tit for tat. No. If I have time, there is a law in Ghana, GIPC law 865. And uh, I would like to beg, Ghanaians are not uh, targeting Nigerians. It's a law that applies to every foreigner who is in the country. And the law indicates that there are certain particular areas that uh, foreigners can't go into it. And if you permit me, um, it says, GIPC law 865, section 27, a person that is not a citizen of an enterprise, which is not wholly owned by a citizen, shall not invest or participate in the sale of goods or provision of services in a market petty trading or hawking or selling of goods in a store at any place. And this is exactly what the challenge has been for this particular issue. It goes on to say, the operation of a taxi or car high service in an enterprise that has a fleet of less than 25 vehicles, the operation of a beauty salon or barber shop, the printing of recharge scratch cards for the use of subscribers of tele telecommunication services, the production of exercise books and other basic stationery, the retail of finished pharmaceutical produce uh, products, and the production, supply, and retail of sachet water and you know other um, like products. Mm -hmm. And you see, this refers to all nationals because this uh, all foreign nationals because this has been particularly reserved for Ghanaians. So it is not a question that. Ghanaians have targeted Nigerians. The law also goes on to state that if you want to actually go in this area, then you have to pay a million dollars. And that 
figure it off. We are targeting Nigerians. No, because you have a lot of good Nigerian businesses in Ghana. Zenith Bank is one of them. Uh, 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 Mamadou's Magazine is another one. Uh, uh, um, uh, Alliance Bank. You've got quite a lot of uh, businesses in Ghana that aren't uh, uh, going through this particular issue. But you see, unfortunately, there are some Nigerian mis miscreants in the system who have not regularized their documents. And these are the kind of people the government and the laws are trying to weed out. And so equally, I think it is an ECOWAS thing that ECOWAS heads of state should sit and see how we put it in place. Let now we have the African to... Free Trade uh, Zone area coming into being. So uh, probably with this, the heads of states will now look at it because it has AU reflection. They'll look at it and see how best we can regularize all these laws so that we all have one law and we can trade without any, any problem. All right, let me bring Funke in here. Funke, I see you taking notes, uh, and I'm sure you're listening, you're listening very keenly to what uh, Mr. Jantua has said, uh, said there. Uh, indeed, the argument was tabled that in Nigeria, the closure of borders ordinarily goes, you know, contrary to the same ECOWAS treaty, which is just what he also mentioned, but was not uh, set aside. Is it a case of what is good for the goose? It's not good for the Ganda. I I'd like you to, to respond also to some of the things that Mr. Jantua mentioned there. Okay, yeah. Um, so, Mr. Kwame, your people have viewed the case of closure of the border as maybe a violation of the ECOWAS treaty and that maybe it's not um, very trade friendly. But let's just take us back a bit to why the border was closed in our case. Okay, it was because there was an issue with smuggling. Okay, and people were dumping some of the reasons, and people were dumping cheap goods here, which also, yes, there should be trade movement, but there are some ethical part of, you know, just smuggling, not going through the right channel. Also, maybe we may not want to put this in the air. So there was this uh, background talk also for security reasons. And if you look at the measure of our own intervention, it is actually not supposed to be something that was a policy driven and targeted to not create an environment of ease of doing business. And it's something that the government is actually also reviewing and talking about. We've signed the after trade deal also. So the government is reviewing it. So it's not like a case of what is good for the goods. Should also you know, be made to be good for the gander. But it, it's not supposed to be like a policy, a long-term thing. Okay, and government is reviewing it. So they are not, it's not like comparing Apple with like orange. Uh, so they are not exactly the same thing. But I agree that a lot of trade partners viewed it as such. All right, let, let me come to you also, Jantua um, Kwame there, because um, some of the things that you, ha you have talked about, I can hear um, Funke trying to respond to that, that. Now, what would be the purpose for distinguishing between native and immigrant traders? And I'm, I'm just wondering, why would this be healthy? Remember that most of the laws that we're talking about, especially in-country laws, were done before ECOWAS laws were put in place. And unfortunately, we haven't been able to get ECOWAS to work the way it's supposed to work. Governments upon governments upon governments upon governments in the West African sub-region haven't really pushed ECOWAS and its protocols. And because of that, local laws have taken uh, place. And as you rightly said, ECOWAS uh, should not uh, supersede local laws, but there has to be some kind of agreement between heads of states and, and countries so that we don't face these types of things. I mean, you get a lot of importation of inferior goods into the market from especially uh, uh, foreign uh, traders. And so we have to look at it and make sure that the goods that are coming in are quality goods, and those, those goods coming in are fit for purpose. And so we have sectioned that for only Ghanaians. But having said that, we've also been able to amend some of the laws that covered this particular area where foreigners are, foreigners are concerned. It used to be that uh, uh, foreigners coming in to do business could only stay for 90 days. That has been amended right now. 
and it's open. You can come in, do business, not in the trading sector, but you can do the other business that you are permitted to do, that the law allows you to do. We've been able to make sure that where uh, residencies are concerned, that one to amendment has come in. So the government of Ghana is trying as much as possible to, to, to make sure we have laws that would fit in with ECOWAS and will also fit in with the new African free trade um, area. I'm sure the African free trade um, uh, area is now, the headquarters is now in Ghana. And so they are going to push ahead with all the uh, ECOWAS states, with the AU, to make sure that at least we have a harmonized law throughout Africa. We know that one of the major things that would help trade is railways. And countries have the mandate to put their railways in. And once this, this railway network is in place, it will make trade easier. So the laws should be such that people can come and go and do their trade easily. Okay. So I'm sure with time, we're in 2020, okay. I'm sure by next five years, a lot of these things we talk about might not be in place. But then countries should be able to harmonize the law so that there can be free trade between countries. Okay. In the spirit of seeking for solution and way forward, Funke, uh, let me now find out from you that what could be the way forward such that good relations, which is the most important, I believe you would agree uh, with me, are preserved you know, between the two countries? Yes, so, so look, looking at what is going on now, interestingly, Ghana is uh, our next law partner. You know, we are usually seen as brothers and sisters, Ghanaians and Nigerians. But, you know, when it's time for survival, everybody wants to survive, you know. So I think that is what is actually playing out here. The government is trying to protect their own people. But you see, here is the thing. So there's this um, way now that the whole world is looking at global value chain transition. And so there's a global economic mindset. And that is what is playing out now. Even the World Bank, so many other bilateral trade deals are trying to, you know, preach this so that, and it is only the countries and institutions that are ready, that can really benefit from, you know, this, because you have to create a business-friendly environment. So what I would say a solution is that we need to have the government of the two, at the highest level, the two governments actually need to come together. I, I do not think, Nigeria does not really have a special law, interestingly. I'm, I'm not aware that there's such law that says if you're a foreigner in Nigeria, you should have a huge amount of money as investment that you have to you know, bring into the country. So, and Nigeria has been working for ease of business for both foreigners and Nigerians. So you can say that the Nigerian government, I'm not holding brief for the Nigerian government, but there's effort, you know, to see that we have this. So it would be good for the Nigerian, uh, the Ghanaian government to also reciprocate. Mm. You know, we don't have, want to have that reciprocity where the government of uh, Nigeria may want to retaliate instead. So we don't want to retaliate, right. but we like to reciprocate the ease of doing business by having uh, Nigerians also being able to do business well. Mm. So they need to have that bilateral discussion at the highest echelon. Okay, I, I right. think it might also be good okay, I'm afraid that the Nigerian so, Nig government to review what they have, okay, to review their laws and make it friendly. It, okay, they didn't really target Nigerians, like you said, but because Nigerians are everywhere doing business, so I can imagine that my brothers and sisters are so many in Ghana, maybe that's why we are feeling it. But it's, it's high time for us to open up to this global value chain. All right, Funke, I'm afraid that's all we can take okay. uh, in the interest of time. The conversation will continue, most definitely. Thank you so very much, Funke, and thank you as well, Kwame, for your contributions. Both of you do keep safe out there. Thank you. And in the business news, Nigeria's gross domestic product decreased by 6.10% year-on-year in real terms in the second quarter of 2020, ending the three-year trend of low but positive real growth rates uh, recorded since the 2016 and 2017 recession. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, the decline was largely attributed to significantly lower levels of both domestic and international economic activity during the quarter, which resulted from nationwide shutdown efforts aimed at containing COVID-19. 
The domestic efforts range from initial restrictions of human and vehicular movement implemented in only a few states to a nationwide curfew, bans on domestic and international travels, closure of schools and markets, etc., affecting both local and international markets. Now, when compared with the second quarter in 2019, which recorded a growth of 2.12%, uh, the second quarter in 2020 growth rate indicates a drop of minus 8.22 percent points and a fall of minus 7.97 percent points when compared to the first quarter of 2020, which is when it was at 1.87 percent. Consequently, for Nigeria's first half of 2020, real GDP declined by minus 2.18 uh, percent year on year compared with 2.11 percent recorded in the first half of 2019, quarter on quarter, and the real GDP decreased by minus 5.04%.